Hello, uh, my name is Brendan O'Farrell. I'm the president and founding partner of DCN Diagnostics. And I'm Pat Vaughan. I'm the chief operating officer here at DCN and I run all the, our development programs. So there's two aspects to, I suppose, the question of how, how quickly one can develop and deploy uh, a, a diagnostic test in, in general. Uh, one is the very practical question of how do you develop it? How do you get it tested, validated, and uh, scaled and ready for manufacturing? And then there's the regulatory question. What do you actually have to do uh, from a regulatory perspective in order to guarantee that the test is of high quality and is very robust when it hits the market? Uh, from a development perspective, a, a, under a normal scenario, um, you know, if we're starting from scratch with a point of care diagnostic, we're starting out with reagent development. Somebody's developing antibodies. You know, there's a process there that takes several months uh, to, to, to generate good binding reagents, screen them and ensure we have the right ones moving forward. And then a typical development process uh, under a, a quality system such as the one DCN operates requires multiple phases. So we start out with a feasibility and prototyping phase where we assess the available reagents. We determine how the assay performs. We establish the basic performance characteristics, establish the architecture of the system and prove that it can work. Right? So that typically is a few months, three, four months to get that done. Uh, and then we move forward from there into a development cycle, which is fully design controlled uh, and designed to produce the most robust, scaled, manufacturable test that can be produced in, in very high quantities if necessary, but no matter what the volume is, is very robust uh, over multiple lots of manufacturing. That's a very time consuming process and it's a, it's a very in-depth process and to do it in, in, in a a typical manner requires anywhere from three months on the low end to 12 months or 18 months even in some very complex cases uh, on the higher end. Um, so that's, that, that's the general process. Now, uh, a lot of that is driven by a risk-benefit analysis. You know, cutting corners at any point in that process brings greater risk to the performance of the test in the marketplace. Um, so the question of A, whether it's allowable to do it and B, whether it's sensible to do it, um, is a big one. And I think that's one that developers and regulators are wrestling with right now, is what is the risk benefit of shortening that development cycle and releasing things to market perhaps before they're fully mature and before we would normally do that. Um, and I think you know the, 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 the risk benefit right now is pushed more towards quick developments and release than it would certainly normally be. Absolutely, yeah. So, you know, we know typically when we finish the development program, we enter into analytical validation and clinical validation. Uh, that's where we test the, the, the assay itself for the robustness of manufacture, the robustness of design. Is it doing exactly what we intended it, it, intended it to do? Um, and it goes through a lot of clinical validation as well externally. So we deploy it into uh, research labs or controlled uh, clinical situations where uh, patient samples are collected, the test is run on those, and they're compared with a, um, a standard of care or a, a gold standard assay. That's to prove that the test is now doing and giving the same answer as the approved tests. Obviously, under the current situations, again, um, what, what's, what's being allowed now is that you get uh, what the FDA term um, emergency use authorization or EUA. This is where there's minimal testing. There is still some validation testing done of the design and of the assay just to prove that it can, it can work on a very small subset of, of samples. Uh, if, if it passes that, then under uh, emergency use authorization, you are allowed to deploy and sell that assay into the marketplace. Now, what happens then is as, as we progress, as we develop more tests, we get time to do more testing. Ultimately, you can now uh, submit that test for the formal FDA uh, clearance in, in, in due course. So playing catch up. Yeah. Playing catch up, yeah. exactly. At the yeah. end of the day. Yeah. But I think one of the, one of the great things about the, the, the point of care diagnostics system, right, a lateral flow test or a rapid test, uh, is that they can be developed very, very quickly. We can make assays work really quickly. If we have a good set of antibodies, yeah. we can make a serology assay work in 
days, weeks, mm -hmm. um, and get it to a certain point that allows for clinical testing. Um, you know, then it becomes a question of what does it take to actually make that a robust scale test? Um, so if there's a need to get something to the market very, very quickly and the regulatory environment says, look, the risk benefit of, of not pushing this forward uh, or the risk of not pushing this forward is, is, is more than the benefit of releasing it with, with some risk associated with the assay, we can push those assays out really quite quickly. Uh, and then, as you say, catch up with some of the, the validation work uh, and the robustness work required to ensure that they can be manufactured at scale. You know, I think we've, we've seen this with the, with the RT-PCR systems that have been deployed, right? I mean, going back to the start of, of 2020, there were several RT-PCR assays available for, for SARS-CoV-2. Um, and they could be produced at a laboratory scale. When it came to the time to make those in millions or tens of millions or hundreds of millions, it's a very different thing, right? So those assays can be developed very quickly and they can be very effective and very clinically uh, predictive. Uh, but the process of taking that laboratory-based assay and moving it into large-scale production is time-consuming, it's involved, and it has to be done right. Absolutely. And, you know, the, the point is there are several assays, RT-PCR assays for SARS-CoV-2 uh, currently. But remember, they're all just under emergency use authorization now. None of them have been fully approved by FDA for long-term uh, uh, use and, and fully FDA cleared. They are, they are working under emergency use authorization. And for now, that's what's needed. Yep.